while solving emt problems we take the coordinate system according to the need of the problem according to the need of the question and many times it is required to transform between the coordinate systems sometimes the question is in cartesian coordinate system but you have to convert it into the cylindrical sometimes the data is given in the cylindrical and you need in the spherical so many times you need to transform between the coordinate systems and while cartesian cylindrical transformation many students do the mistake while calculating phi so in this video let's see how to avoid that mistake electromagnetics is the study of waves fields and while studying emt the most commonly used coordinate systems are cartesian cylindrical and spherical but you know my dear we use the coordinate system according to the need of the problem according to the need of the question that you are solving for example if you are solving any question related to spherical charge let's say you are calculating flux coming out of the spherical charge in that case the desirable coordinate system that you will use would be spherical coordinate system in some problem let us say you are finding out electric field intensity because of the line charge in that case your required coordinate system your preferable coordinate system would be cylindrical coordinate system yes or no so we take the coordinate system according to the need of the problem and my dear while solving emt problems many times you need to convert from one coordinate system to other data is given in cartesian coordinate system but you require in cylindrical some problem is given in spherical but you want to solve it in cartesian so many times while solving emt problems you need to convert between these coordinate systems and in such coordinate system transformation remember one thing that any point or any vector if it is presented in one coordinate system and if you represent that same point or same vector in other coordinate system always remember that the position of that point the position of that point or that vector in the space it is exactly the same you are only representing that point or vector into the other coordinate system we are just representing it in other way yes or no the actual position of that point or that vector in the space it is the same yes or no now let us say you are solving one problem and your need is to convert the given point which is presented in cartesian coordinate system into the cylindrical coordinate system let us say you are given a point in the space point p coordinates are x y z you know that in the cartesian coordinate system the point is represented by x y z and now you want to represent the same point into cylindrical coordinate systems that means in terms of rho phi and z you know that in cartesian and cylindrical in both the coordinate systems z coordinate is same so while converting from cartesian to cylindrical or from cylindrical to cartesian no need to worry about z coordinate it is going to be exactly same in both the coordinate systems okay so our requirement is the given point is in cartesian coordinate system p x y z and we want to represent that point into the cylindrical coordinate system that means you already know x y z now you want rho phi z of course z is same so you want rho and phi now my dear remember the definitions of uh, coordinate systems or what are the x y z coordinates and what are the rho phi z coordinates x coordinate it is the distance of the point from the y z plane y coordinate 
it is the distance from the plane xz plane as you can see from the screen similarly in the cylindrical coordinate system rho rho is the lateral distance of that point from the z axis and phi it is the angle made by the vertical half plane containing that point with the positive x axis so as you can clearly observe from the screen i have shown x y rho and phi also yes or no so if you check carefully you can easily say that the rho coordinate is given as under root of x square plus y square yes or no it is the complete right angle triangle and similarly phi coordinate can be given as tan inverse of y by x yes or no and my dear here is the mistake that most of the student do it is 100% correct phi is given as tan inverse y by x that means tan inverse y coordinate upon x coordinate that is 100% correct but if you use this formula chances are that you may get wrong answer why let us see so what i am saying if you have a point presented in the cartesian coordinate system and you want to represent that point into the cylindrical one that means you already know x y and z and you are calculating rho phi and z of course z is same in both the coordinate system so rho is given as under the root x square plus y square and today's topic of discussion phi phi is given as tan inverse y by x y coordinate upon x coordinate and now my dear what i am saying this formula can lead you to the wrong answer it is not necessary that this formula give you 100% correct answer no this can give you the wrong answer of phi how for example let us see you are given with two points p and p dash let's say point p is 110 and p dash is minus 1 minus 10 let's say these are the two points of course they are represented in the cartesian coordinate system and now you want to represent these points into the cylindrical coordinate system so you will calculate rho you will calculate phi so phi for p tan inverse y by x tan inverse 1 by 1 tan inverse 1 that is 45 similarly phi for p dash tan inverse minus 1 by minus 1 that is tan inverse of 1 again 45 so the phi coordinates of both of these two points they are coming out to be exactly same but this cannot be true no this cannot be true points p and p dash they are completely different points point p 110 it is in the first quadrant as like this first quadrant of xy plane and point p dash minus 1 minus 1 0 it is in the third quadrant of xy plane as like this the phi coordinate of this point and phi coordinate of this point they cannot be same one is in the first quadrant other is in the third quadrant so my dear the formula phi equal to tan inverse y by x it can lead you to the wrong answer of phi you need to check in which quadrant that point lies then and then you can get the correct answer of phi so my dear here is the tip while writing this formula of phi don't just write phi equal to tan inverse y by x no don't just write tan inverse y by x put the mod sign put that y by x into the mod sign don't consider the negative signs of x and y okay very very important tip when you calculate phi coordinate from the formula tan inverse y by x don't just put y by x as it is put that y by x under the mod into the mod and in that tan inverse mod of y by x then manually check out in which quadrant that point is and then manually plus or minus certain angle 
I am I'm I'm going to tell you how 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 you how you should do that. But remember that write the formula for phi as tan inverse mod of y by x and then plus or minus some angle based on the quadrant of that point. For example, if the point P is present in the first quadrant of xy plane, then no need to worry. x is positive, y is also positive. Both the coordinates x and y coordinates are positive. So you are going to get the correct answer by your formula phi equal to tan inverse y by x. Either you write tan inverse y by x or you write tan inverse mod of y by x. You are going to get the correct answer because both x and y are positive here. Okay. But if the point is present in the second quadrant, x is negative, y is positive. Now in this case, my dear, your formula tan inverse mod of y by x. See, what I have told you, always put mod sign, always put y by x into the mod sign while calculating the phi. And after calculating tan inverse mod of y by x, then check out the quadrant of that point and based on that, add or minus certain angle. Okay, so phi equal to tan inverse mod of y by x will give you that angle as you can see from the screen. The minimum angle between that row and the negative x axis. But my dear, you know that this is not our phi, yes or no? Our phi, the phi coordinate of this point P should be measured from the positive x axis as you can see from the screen. So, how will, you, how will you get your actual phi? How will you get your actual phi? The 180 degree or pi minus that angle. That means our actual phi will be pi 180 degree minus tan inverse of mod of y by x. Yes or no? So, this is the extra term. Am I right? This is, this is the extra term that you have to check out the manually. Don't just rely on the x and y coordinates. No, put the mod sign there. And after that, calculate tan inverse mod of y by x. And after that, check out in which quadrant that point is present. And if that point P is present in the second quadrant, then your actual answer of phi is 180 degree or pi minus tan inverse mod of y by x. And why this is so? This is the answer. Because tan inverse mod of y by x gives you that angle, that minimum angle. But according to our definition, phi is the this angle measured with the positive x-axis. Similarly, if point P is in the third quadrant, then as you can see from the screen, x is also negative, y is also negative. Yes or no? So, if point P is in the third quadrant, then your formula phi equal to tan inverse mod of y by x will give you that angle. And our actual answer of phi will be phi is measured from the positive x axis. Yes or no? So, our actual angle of phi will be pi 180 degree pi or 180 degree plus this angle yes or no 180 degree or pi plus this angle and similarly if the point p is in the fourth quadrant then as you can see from the screen your actual phi the the angle given by tan inverse mod of y by x will be as you can see from the screen but actual phi will be 2 pi minus this angle or you can say just minus of tan inverse mod of y by x. Yes or no? So these things you have to keep in mind while transforming from Cartesian to cylindrical and particularly while obtaining the phi coordinate from the y and x coordinates. Very simple. So, in the next week, let's meet with another mind-bending topic. Thank you.